welcome to today's tech tip. My name is Franco and today I'm going to be showing you a really neat tool in SOLIDWORKS that has many uses. The smart component functionality in SOLIDWORKS has been around for a while. It can be used in a variety of ways. Today I'm going to show you how to use smart components as an, in an easy way to insert related components and not have to create the same mates every time. Since this set of components will be used in many different configurations within the same top-level assembly, sub-assemblies can become cumbersome to manage. I'm going to start off with this pressure regulator. It has a number of different connectors that can be used depending on what is going on in the rest of the assembly. I want to be able to add this component to my assembly and just tell solvers which connectors I want to add. To set this up, I have to create a dummy assembly first. Let's drop the regulator in and add a few connectors and mate them in place as I normally would. As you can see, I created a mess of an assembly with interfering components all over the place. That's okay. Once I make the smart component and add it to my assembly, solvers will ask me which ones I want to filter out. To create the smart components, I simply select the pressure regulator and go to Tools, Make Smart Component. In the components area, I simply select which components I want to come along with it. Since they are all interfering, I'll select them from the Flyout Feature Manager. Notice the other settings in this dialog. We can also add features like cuts and holes, and there's an auto size option that can actually change configurations of inserted components based on what they're attaching to. Stay tuned to our webinar series for a lunch and learn coming soon on these topics. When I click OK, notice the regulator gets a lightning bolt icon. It's now a smart component. If I open it in its own window, we can see that it has a smart feature folder in its tree. In there, we see a components folder with references to all the parts. While we are talking about reference documents, it's probably a good point to discuss the reference files. If I click File Find References, we see that this part file is now looking for all the other parts in its references. If you're going to use this method with smart components, you have to make sure these files don't move. Just like with any other assembly, you always have, have to have access to all the references. I'll now save the smart component and can discard the dummy assembly. Let's now add the smart component to an, a top-level assembly. We can see that the component has a lightning bolt again. When I select it, it also gets a special icon in the graphics area. By clicking this icon, it invokes the smart component functionality. In the property manager, you can see the list of components we specified earlier. By unchecking the ones I don't want and leaving the ones I do, I can very easily create a pseudo subassembly. Let's take this one step further. I've already created a smart component of this fitting. I can simply click on it and choose the next fitting in the chain. In theory, I can repeat this over and over and build my assembly like this. So next time you find yourself assembling the same few standard parts over and over again, consider creating smart components. With a little upfront setup, you can save yourself hours of time in the long run. I'd also like to extend a special thank you to Kevin Wilson from Max Pro Technology out of Fairview, Pennsylvania for the inspiration and models for this tech tip. Stay tuned to our blog at caddimensions.com for more of a case study on how Kevin uses this functionality. Once again, thank you for watching another CAD Dimensions tech tip. See you next time. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.